Hi guys. All right, here we are. This video really marks the first official um, content video of the course. Um, it pertains to week one, um, where what we're talking about is basically what is philosophy. So if you're watching this video, that means you have already submitted the before you read questions because if we're not to watch these videos before you answer those questions. The whole idea with those questions is that um, it's sort of like a temperature check, like, well, what do you think before? And then watch and read and then hmm, okay, what do you think now? It's the only real way to measure any sort of change or development of thought. Okay, so here we go. So the article that I'm going to be talking about with you um, right now is called um, The Value of Philosophy. It's written by a person named Bertram Russell. Um, we're actually going to read something else that Russell wrote um, next week, actually. Um, a brilliant, brilliant person. Um, the article that we're reading is actually a, a portion of the last chapter of a book that Russell wrote called The Problems of Philosophy. So this, this last chapter has sort of been anthologized into a separate article. So um, the point of this article is really to talk about what is the value of philosophy? What can one hope to get out of philosophy? What is philosophy trying to do? And um, I guess this is going to be a bit of a summary of the article. I hope something in here will be helpful. So Russell starts out by saying, you know, the only real reason, like, there's no article written about, like, the value of science, the value of medicine, the value of economics, you know, the value of math. Like, people don't question the value of those things. Why does everybody question the value of philosophy? Um, Russell says the reason we question it is because, um, I guess, two main things. One reason we question it is because what philosophy offers us is quite different um, in many ways from what these other disciplines offer us. Um, and the other reason that people question the value of philosophy is because Russell suggests we have some misunderstanding about what it means for something to be valuable. So I'm just going to consult my notes here for a second. Um, okay, so uh, Russell says there's basically two kinds of people in the world, and most of the people in the world he describes as like practical people. These are people who he suggests live a feverish and confined life. People who are interested in only their own individual lives, or perhaps the, the, the very small extended version of their life, their very close friends or their family members. Um, but he calls this person the practical man or the practical person. Um, and this is someone who sees no value in philosophy. Um, he says that this person's life is, um, is a, a frantic life because this person is constantly trying to fit um, the outer world into their own world. Um, where Russell will suggest the life of the philosophical person is calm and free. Um, so that's an interesting, an interesting idea. Um, the, the aim of philosophy, what philosophy is aiming at, is knowledge. Um, not knowledge in terms of answering questions, more knowledge in terms of expanding our idea of the universe and what's possible. Um, it, um, its aim, philosophy's aim, is not to provide definite answers to any questions. In fact, many of the questions that philosophy is answering um, either don't have any definite answers or um, we certainly aren't in any position to know how those definite answers might be found. Um, so the, so it's, it's wrong to expect philosophy to give us definite answers. If that's what you're wanting from philosophy, you're not going to get it. In fact, if philosophy were able to provide definite answers, that question 
would cease to be a philosophical question. In other words, um, if I were be able to, if I were able to tell you what the meaning of life is, or if there's such a thing as morality and immorality in some sort of universal, eternal way, if those questions had answers. They wouldn't be philosophical questions. So philosophical questions are, by definition, um, to some extent, questions that don't have answers or the questions that have answers that we currently have no idea how to find. But Russell suggests the value of studying philosophy is does not lie in answering the questions. The value of studying philosophy lies in the investigation of the questions themselves. Um, I'm pausing this, so stand by. Okay, let's keep going. So, um, so Russell says, um, the value of philosophy is in fact to be sought largely in its very uncertainty. Um, what the uncertainty does is it allows us to expand our mind. If we think we know, when we think we know, it stops thought to some extent. But when you wonder, when you contemplate, when you consider, it expands thought. Russell believes there is value in this expansion of thought. It really, in many ways, is, is, is contrary to what most of us learned in school our whole lives growing up. What was valued in school? Having the answer, right? Um, who knows? Who knows? Oh, you know? Oh, that's great. You know. Really, Russell says, the value is the question. It's the question that um, encourages this expansion of our mind. So the calm and free that the philosophic person enjoys is because of the, um, uh, the sense to which or in which um, the world doesn't have to be constricted in order to fit into my box. The world can be explored and discovered. So we talk about this article, we read this article early on, in fact, the first article, um, in order to sort of be like, okay, let's just get clear on what it is we're supposed to expect from philosophy. You are not taking this course to get definite answers to anything. People don't study philosophy to get definite answers. Now, that doesn't mean the definite answers don't exist. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't try as hard as we can to come upon answers. But the value in philosophy is the doing of philosophy. Um, it is a process. It is not about the product that it produces other than the product being the expansion of your own mind. Now, I get that um, this could be um, particularly tricky in an online course uh, to, to deal with because um, you just want the answer. What's the answer, right? There is no just the answer in philosophy. It's a question of exploring the question, thinking about various answers, and... Um, reformulating your own and then it's a continual process so its goal is um is inward uh he talks russell talks also about uh, this in the article when he talks about science um we all benefit from science, even though I don't know anything about carbon or hydrogen or, or any of these combinations of molecules or whatever. I don't know anything about any of this, but I, I benefit and you benefit. We all benefit from it because we don't have to understand the science in order to benefit from it. We have um, chemicals and, and, you know, plastics and, and things that, that people who do understand the science have created and invented, which in turn benefit my life. But philosophy really is valuable to the one doing the philosophy. And then to the extent to which me doing philosophy makes me, whatever, a better person, then in some way me doing philosophy 
benefits you because we have a better relationship or we encourage each other to think more deeply or something. But the goods that philosophy produces, it is only good through the doing it. So with that in mind, um, that is what I am hoping this course is going to get you to do, is to do philosophy, to conduct this thought, to expand your mind, um, and hopefully um, um, find value in that. I'm going to pause again here. I just want to read you um, the last um, paragraph of, of the essay because I, I like it. So here it goes. So Russell says, thus, to sum up our discussion of the value of philosophy, philosophy is to be studied not for the sake of any definite answers to its questions, since no definite answers can, as a rule, be known to be true, but rather for the sake of the questions themselves, because these questions enlarge our conception of what is possible enrich our intellectual imagination, and diminish the dogmatic assurance which closes the mind against speculation. But above all, because through the greatness of the universe which philosophy contemplates, the mind is also rendered great and becomes capable of that union with the universe which constitutes its highest good. Oh my gosh, don't you love that? It could make me cry. So, right, the union of the universe. Um, yeah, it's deep stuff. So maybe something that I said in this video was helpful. Some point along the way, y'all are going to have to give me some feedback um, and tell me how these videos are going and if, if they're any, um, any help or, or use at all. Anyway, I guess that's what I got to say. Um, email, call me with questions. I look forward to your uh, responses in the after you read questions. And I um, hope you're doing well. See ya.